Good evening. Let's stand all over the house this evening. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Let's sing this song together. for that today, church. We are a blessed people. Let's just sing that chorus together. For there's a roof <coughs> up above me I a good place to sleep There's food on my table and shoes on my feet You gave Father, Lord, we just welcome you into this house today. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come together to celebrate Thanksgiving together. Father, I ask, Lord, that every service moderator, every participant today, God, would be 
orchestrated according to the plan that you have outlined today. Father, I pray that, Lord, all that is here today, God, would be here, Lord, because they were assigned and appointed to be here today. And God, let us spend the next few moments together as brothers and sisters interdenominationally connected, serving the same God and worshiping the same Lord and being thankful to the same God who sustained us another year. And for that, Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor that is due your name. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And you may be seated here just for a moment. Let me give you a few instructions here in just a minute. I'm going to have you to do something we do around our property, which is a meet and greet. Let you kind of see your friends and family across the aisle. But throughout the course of the night, there's going to be various ministers of the gospel and various preachers and speakers that are going to come and lead us in various uh, portions of uh, tonight's service. And so you're going to see different folks uh, celebrating with us tonight. And so we're uh, going to have a great time in the Lord. We're all going to have to go to heaven one day together, so we should practice that while we're here on earth. So we're going to practice that today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the next two or three minutes, and we're going to let you greet one there. So find somebody you haven't got to talk to yet today, and, uh, and welcome them to church tonight. God bless you. Just Continue with our service as you kind of find your way back to your seats. We're going to go ahead and let uh, Victory Baptist Church get in place. But um, we're going to have specialized prayer throughout the course of tonight. So tonight uh, we are especially honored to have different ministers that are going to lead us in prayer. So I'm going to ask Pastor Doug Cooper who is over at Hickory Grove tonight. He is going to lead us in scripture and prayer regarding our nation and our country. How many of you believe the, the nation needs Jesus right now? Yeah, so we all should be praying for that today. So let's continue to worship with him during this time. The song says we have a fine family. I'm going to say it's a good looking family here tonight. Amen? Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? <laughs> Amen. I have been given the great privilege and opportunity of praying over our nation. You want me to eat it? Yeah. That's what they tell me to do at my church. But um, maybe I'll get a little bit louder here in a few minutes. But we have, we have been given the special privilege. And I say we because we're going to be praying over the nation. It's not just going to be me praying. It's us together. And I'm here to tell you, our nation needs a lot of prayer, doesn't it? Amen. We need to really approach the throne room on behalf of our nation. 
but also begin to start thinking we also need to be praying over Israel. We need to be praying for Israel. We don't need to even stop praying for them, not one day, but we also need to be praying for Ukraine. I was just listening to some of that even tonight on the news before I came. They're still in dire need of prayer. And so there's so many things that we can be praying about. But the one thing that I want us to do tonight, I want us to pray Scripture. I believe that that's important. And so I picked out some Scripture really to go along with the prayer. Concerning our nation, I picked out Psalm 85, verses 6 and 7 that simply says this, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. For Israel, Psalm 122, verses 6 and 7, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. And then finally for Ukraine, Psalm 62, verse 7 and 8. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. I'm going to try my best not to preach y'all, but listen, you're going to have to help me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's just begin to pray over these nations. Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight. Lord, surely you are on your throne tonight. Surely, Lord, you see everything that is happening on this planet that you have created and everything is being orchestrated together even right now because we know that the return of Christ is imminent, Father, and could happen at any moment. But Lord, we bless you tonight because in this moment we can Come together as a family here in this wonderful sanctuary. Gather together in one mind and then in one accord to approach your throne on behalf of the nation and the nations. But Lord, right now we lift up our nation to you. This great great states, the United States of America. And Father, we do make this statement. Will you not revive us again, Lord? We need a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in our nation, Lord. We need our leadership of the nation to turn back to God. We need those that are in positions of authority to turn back to Scripture because that's where we find the authority. And Lord, we just lift up the nation. Just pour out your Spirit once again. May we rediscover the joy of salvation. May we rediscover what it is to walk in your paths, Lord. To grab a hold of what you have claimed and claim those promises over our nation. We believe that, Father. But Lord, at this time as we pray over our nation, we also pray for the nation of Israel. Lord, if it was not not for the nation of Israel, we would not be here tonight. For from Israel you birthed the Savior of the world who is Christ, the Lord. And may, Father, we always lift them up, knowing, Lord, that from them, the Lord, that your Savior came into the world. And so, Lord, we also believe that the Scripture says that those who bless Israel will be blessed, and those who curse will also be cursed. So we bless Israel tonight. We pray for prosperity and for peace and for protection over them. May your hand be upon them. We also also pray over the people in Ukraine. Lord, we don't want to see any war. We don't want to see any of these things happen. But Lord, we know that they do. But in the midst of it, what people can do is find that you are a refuge. That you are a mighty fortress. And Lord, even though times may be troublesome, you are the one that we can lean to in all times. And so, Father, we pray, Father, that you be the refuge for these people, Lord. Again, we bless you. Lord, we thank you that we can pray these things over the nations. We pray, Lord, your presence just simply be with our country. Lord, we know that next year we're going into an election year. Father, Lord, we pray that you're going to put the right people in the right positions that's going to lead us back to a place of righteousness. Lead us back to a place of morality. We know, Father, Lord, that ultimately you are the highest authority, but you place people in positions of power, Lord, and we need the right people in the right places and for the right time, Lord, to bring us back to you. But we bless you now, Father. May you continue to be with us in this service. May we give give you all the praise and glory that you alone are worthy of. And it's in Jesus' name I pray these things. And everybody says along with me, amen, amen. amen. Welcome. Is this thing on?
Spirit of Jesus living within us, never to fail or say, unending promise, heaven inside. Whispers the sound of your name. Holy, holy is the Lord, worthy to be praised.
I get the honor of praying for our community. Uh, any of y'all belong to community? A few of you. Uh, did anybody get one of these cool candles when you came in? Look at that. Look at that. Bad connection. Right? It's because it's not tied in, though. If I, if I really twist it up in there, it's not as so flashy. Jesus said that we're to be the light of the world, not a strobe light, though. And I think community actually starts in home. And if we as people aren't connected to the power source, you're going to look more like a strobe light to the world. And if anybody's seen one of those lights, that caused disorientation and confusion. And isn't that what our community is filled with these days? When we come together as a community and we're plugged into the source, we begin to see a different kind of light, a constant light, a consuming light, a light that is also brilliant and it reveals everything that needs to be revealed so that we can give our control over to the one who should have authority over every bit of our life. Amen. But it also gives us a fire that purifies there are some churches that are very bright, but there's no heat. But there are some churches that they're all heat, but no light. But we need to have a fire, a refiner's fire. I wish to read you a promise from Christ Jesus out of Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. And this is what he says, what community should look like. And then I'm going to pray for our communities. Amen. Jesus said this. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you drink and when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing and when it was and when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you and the king will answer them truly I tell you just as you did it to one of the what least of these who are members of my family you did it to me you know the trouble with the least of these there's a reason often why they're sick or in prison or naked and alone any of y'all lived a perfect life when we begin to understand how to love those who can't give back to us how to love those who might not even love you back when we learn how to reach out to those who can't reach out and help others will really begin to grasp what kind of community Jesus wanted us to have. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we lift up our community to you, Lord, we want to rebuke the spirits of anger, oppression, bigotry, addiction, abuse, alcoholism, pornography. Lord, all things that corrupts and steals and rots a family from the inside out father we rebuke it in the name of jesus christ lord that you would stoke the flames within our heart lord through the holy spirit god that you would purify our hearts lord that we would be not just a community father but we would reach out to other communities lord that we would be the light that you saw us to be while you hung on the cross and you looked at the very ones who pierced you, who cursed you, who crucified you. You said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, might we have that kind of love in our community. And Lord Jesus, I pray it starts in our homes. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. All God's people say.
I could, could I please have everybody stand?
you, Jesus. We invite you in tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing it out, church. I know it's not much, but nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, I tell people all the time after 31 years of the Navy, I do have a parade ground voice. The uh, Don't always use it. Probably not always good if I use it. But it is my distinct pleasure, and I'm honored to be able to talk about the church. I pray for the church. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you know, uh, everybody knows what the church is. Well, do you? What's the church? Who can tell me? We are. It, it's not the building. It's us. Those that are saved by Christ and love him. So, I took some notes. I promise I'll be brief. Not more than 30, 40 minutes. My wife said, don't say that. Okay. I did anyway. Uh, in Hebrews, in chapter 10, 22 through 25, it says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Christ is the head of the church in Colossians 1.18. In Colossians 3 and 12 through 16, it tells us what we as a church should be. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. For if any man have a quarrel against another as Christ forgave you, so also do ye him. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And last... 1 Corinthians 12. For the body is not one member, but many. And everybody knows about the foot can't do it, the eye can't do it, all that stuff to it. We've read it many times. But we are more than one member. We ourselves as a community, as a body, are part and parcel and make up the church. So what one person cannot do Somebody else can. I can't play the piano like this young lady over here can. I can play the guitar, but you know what? If all we had was a piano, she'd be more important than me. If all we had was a guitar, I don't want to say important, that's probably the wrong term, but at least I could worship the Lord and we could worship together. So we do what we can for each other, and we do what we can for the Lord as a body, and we all work together to make it better. What's the worst thing you think you could hear? Here's the worst. I teach a Sunday school class, so my Sunday school class has heard this before. But what's the worst thing you think you can hear out there? I don't want to be like those Christians. I wouldn't want to go to that church. 
So if you show up in line at Walmart and all you are is grumpy Gertie, and if the waitress comes by and you're yelling at her because she's not filling your key glass fast enough, and all the stuff that goes along with being a good Christian, are you supposed to be smiling and happy? Are you supposed to be loving and kind? Are you doing that? So I want to pray for the church that we embody all of these virtues that the Bible says we should have and use them in the community, in our nation, in our church to love one another, to encourage one another, and to do better. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise your holy name for this opportunity to come before you tonight. Lord, we're praying for the church, for this body that is before you and the others that are in other places tonight. Lord, I pray that you will be with them and keep them and lift them up and strengthen them. Help them to lift up each other and strengthen them. Help us to use your word to make ourselves and others better. Lord, help us to continue to be a pillar in the community, to help, to encourage, to love, to respect, to help each and every one of them to get better because that's our job, Lord. To teach them your son, Jesus crucified, risen again, to be their savior. Help us to spread that word to others. Lord, we love you. Pray you will continue to bless us and help us to do as you would have us to do, Lord. We ask all of this in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Mercy and grace. 
like a Russian wind. Like a Russian wind. Jesus, breathe with them. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me. Like a May be seated. Will you welcome Pastor Jack Todd as he's our guest speaker tonight for our Thanksgiving service at this time. told me to start with he said 10 minutes maybe 15 I don't think he said any more than that but anyhow we're gonna uh, we're gonna attempt to to share a few things with you today and it's Thanksgiving and if I asked everybody what it's about Thanksgiving some of you would probably say it's about a great big dinner that we're going to have and all of us are planning dinner. I don't mind telling you, I've already went today and I've bought my collards. I've bought mustard greens. I've already put them in the pot. I've already sampled them today, tonight. <laughs> I wanted to stay home and eat some more of them, but I didn't. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. I really am. I came up from the old school and uh, I'm glad I have. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I, I went to a church when I, I got back into a church in 1980. And I'm glad I went to a church that taught me how to worship. Did you know you need to be taught how to worship? This is not always worship. You know where worship comes from? This is a part of it. Worship comes within here. And when you begin to feel that flowing and flowing over like 10 tons and you begin to lift your hands and weep and cry and begin to tell him just how much you love him and what you, what he's done for you and thank him for it. And that's what we're to do is Thanksgiving. And I started thinking uh, last evening whenever I was really confirmed that I was going to do this today and uh, I almost didn't know if I could. I've got a funeral tomorrow. I had a visitation tonight that I had to to beg off and said I wouldn't go and do it and a lot of other things going on I've got two sisters one in Raleigh North Carolina in the hospital had surgery today got one in Conway Hospital that had a massive surgery yesterday and they didn't think she was going to make it so it's just been a lot going on so I don't mind telling you I am very thankful I'm thankful for who God is and how he blesses us and how he keeps us 
And I don't know about you, I, I'm glad that I learned to worship the Lord 40-some years ago. And I've never forgotten what it is to lift my hands and give God praise and glory and honor. And I'm thankful for that. Last night I was sitting at my table, and I'm going to try to hurry tonight. I really am, um, the best of my ability. But anyhow, I, I was sitting at my table last night, which I call my desk at home. And I started thinking about this, and I got to going back, back to the days when the pilgrims were called pilgrims at that time, when they left England. And I kind of forgot about a lot of this stuff, and I had to refresh my memory a little bit. Brother, I appreciate you. I'd like to hear you teach Sunday school. Sergeant or whatever you are, I don't know, but I'd like to hear it. Thanksgiving, the first official, I'm going to give you a little history lesson tonight. The first official proclamation of the national Thanksgiving holiday. Does anybody know when it came into a, a basically law? No, sir. No, it's all right. You, you're okay. It, it didn't come into existence until 1863. Now, if I, I'd have been just like you, I'd have probably said something off the wall. And it was signed into, into law by Abraham Lincoln in 1863. A national Thanksgiving Day to be held every November, and that's what we do. But many Americans, including people of Native American ancestry, believe it represents the true history of oppression and bloodshed that underlies the relationship between European settlers and Native Americans. In September 1620, a small ship called the Mayflower left Plymouth, England, carrying 102 passengers and an assortment of religious separates. And I thought about that. All diverse, different people. And... If you think about this, this uncomfortable crossing lasted 66 days. Could you imagine being cramped into a small ship with 66 people and everybody's different and everybody's different diversities and all different dislikes and whatever else it is. But they crossed that great ocean and came to this country. And they, 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 they dropped anchor near the tip of Cape Cod and carrying 102 passengers seeking a new home where they could uh, freely practice their faith. Now, we got the privilege today to practice our faith. How many believe that? With all of my heart, we're diverse in this church tonight it's already been said we're different denominations, and I want to tell you something now. We might as well get this out of the way to start with. Denominations was not made by God. It was made by man. Did you know that? So we're not different. We're just all in the same group working together for the same goal, and that's what we need to get in our minds. Seeking a new home where they could practice their faith. And other individuals lured by promise of pr prosperity, land ownership in the new world. In November of 1621, their first corn harvest um, proved to be successful. A man by the name of William Bradford, who was the governor at that time of the organized um, uh, people, or the ones they call pilgrims or the colonists, a feast was invited the Native Americans and the colonists to come for a feast. Now, I want you to think about this now. They didn't have turkey. They didn't have dressing. They didn't have all the finer things that you and I have today. They didn't even have collard greens. How can you live without collard greens? Did you know what was on their menu? Anybody have a clue? No duck. <laughs> Let me tell you. Lobster. That was right up my alley, I'm going to tell you. Seal. 
Can you imagine eating seal? And swans was on the menu. Swans. One month later, excuse me, after the Cape Cod, their destination at the mouth of the Hudson River, one month later, they crossed into the Massachusetts Bay where the pilgrims, as they are commonly known, began to work and establish villages at Plymouth. The word thanks and thanksgiving go back much, much further than 1620 and 21. If you go back into the history of this book, this glorious book we call the Bible, go back into the very beginning of it when God created the heavens and the earth. And he made it for himself. He made it and he created, and as, as all of you know, Adam and Eve. They were unthankful. Aren't you glad we're thankful tonight? We're a thankful bunch of people, but we're not as thankful as you believe. Thanksgiving, the act as as aspect of praise that gives God thanks for what he does for us. In all actuality, Thanksgiving should be should spring forth gratefully from our hearts. God, I thank you. Would you lift your hands and just tell him right now, out of the abundance of your heart, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for what you've done for me. This week I had the privilege of taking a young man or, or getting a young man taken to Teen Challenge and he stayed all 12 hours and that was it. He's very unthankful, but he's got a problem. And we need to step in the gap to bridge the hedge. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into that area right now. In all actuality, Thanksgiving should spring forth grateful from our heart. But it is required by God of all believers to be thankful. Regardless of your attitude. And uh, I listened to, I don't remember if it was this man or whoever it was, said something about that line at Walmart. I've witnessed some of those Christians. They call themselves Christians and get an attitude like you wouldn't believe and, and say things that they had no right to say. That's not very thankful. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give God thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, you and I. We should be grateful to God for all things. In Ephesians 5 and 20, it says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 3 through 5. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. I wonder, do we always pray for one another? I don't get to see Brother Doug very often and Brother Chris and Brother Chris and the other brethren that I uh, that we work together in this community, and we don't not doing it quite like we used to, and I'm partly to blame for that too. But you know, I tell you, I am thankful for these men because I believe that they pray for me every time they pray. I didn't forget you though, little Jonathan. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where, whereof you heard before in the word of the gospel. I had a young man call me the other night about 11 o'clock. He said, uh, or he sent me a text. I, I, I get sick of text, people. I'm not a text man. The only text I ever knew anything about was a textbook. But he texted me and he said, are you awake? Well, I can tell you. That little small ding, ding will wake me up. It don't take much anymore to wake me up. And I sent him a text back, or no, I called him. I said, yeah, I'm awake. He said, I just need to talk. Just got saved in the last few months. I had the privilege to baptize him in a creek. It almost fell off and into the deep. And I don't mind telling you, I can't handle much of that anymore. But, uh. He kind of helped me. Next thing I know, I was baptizing his mom and I was baptizing his daddy. And I had to get him to help me baptize him. And I said, you know something? You've got something that you can tell your family and your church people that you helped to baptize your mom and daddy. Ain't many can say that. 
And I don't mind telling you, I'm very thankful for that privilege to do those things today. We still believe in old-time holiness. I still believe with all my heart. It's still what Jesus Christ said and not what I think or nobody else thinks. It doesn't matter what Jonathan thinks or what Doug thinks. It's all that matters. It was God says. Whatever he said will work. I don't want to lose my place because I'm good for that. Chapter, uh, verse 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the gospel. Colossians 3, 17, And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Somebody said about the services that we would do, and I don't remember how you said it, but about, you know, people coming by. And I would not I would tell you who this young man is, but I, I'm, I'm not going to. But ever so often he'll come by my house where I live in the parsonage on the, ch- the church. And I can see him coming up that, that driveway. And he'll, I, I've got my door open most of the time when I'm home. I don't like being cooped up. And I, I looked and I seen him coming. I said, yeah, he's wanting something to eat. He's on drugs, bad, he's messed up, smells dirty, don't have nowhere to stay, lives in the woods, doesn't get a shower very often. And I went to the door, and he, when he knocked on the door, I, I waited till he knocked and went to the door. And I opened the door, and I said, come on in. I wonder would everybody let him in. But he smelled real bad. And I told him to come on in. Walked in and went to, went to the table, and he said, I said, what, what do you want? I know what he wants. He wants a cup of coffee. I, I said, you want some coffee? Yes, sir. Fixed him the coffee. I said, you hungry? Yes, sir. Fixed him a plate. Now, I'll tell you what, there ain't many times you come to my house, there ain't something cooked in my refrigerator. Why? Because I don't never know who's going to come. You understand what I'm saying? We're supposed to be there to help people. We're supposed to be there to do what we can to help everybody that we can. And I don't mind telling you, I'm thankful that God has placed me in the position that I can do certain things. I just turned 70, Chris. (laughs) And it's a blessing to be 70. How many can say it's a blessing to be 70? Let me see your hands. How many in here is 70 plus? I know there's more than that. Come on, lift your hand. How many 70 plus? You don't want nobody to know you're 70? (laughs) I'm thankful that I've made it to that place in this life. The words thanks and thanksgiving go back much further than 1621. It goes back into the beginning of the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 2 and 7 says, we give thanks to God always for you all, all making members of me, mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience and hope and our Lord Jesus in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in the power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men you were among, we were among you for your sakes. And you became followers of us, of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. I can't even say the word. I can't half read it, see it, to be honest with you. That's the bad thing. But when you think about this, we're to pray for one another. We're to be so thankful. When I came in here tonight, and I, I didn't get here till about 7, when I walked in, I seen this little church full. I don't know how many of you can see, but it's full in here tonight. The diversity of people, my God. Man, if everybody in here prayed for me, I I, I ought to be the blessed man there is in this entire nation. 
If everybody played for, prayed for one another and were thankful for one another for all that God has done for you and, and how he's blessed you, we are a thankful, should be a thankful group of people. Why? Because we have good places to worship. We have good places to come. We've got good brothers and sisters in Christ that will pray for us and love us, and that's what it's all about. And you think about this. In 1 Thessalonians 2.13, he said, For this cause also... Thank we God without ceasing because when ye received the word of God, which you have heard of us, you received it not as the word, word of men, but as is in truth the word of God. I don't know about you. I love my brethren, but I love the word of God more than anything in this world, which worketh also in you that believe. We are to also to thank God in anticipation of his answering our prayers. In Philippians 4 and 6, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be, be made known unto God knowing that the, he answer, his, his answers will always be in accord with his perfect will for our lives. You see, I... I, don't, I want God to bless me, but I want his will in my life more than anything else in this world. I'm getting closer to the goal. I'm closer to going home now than I've ever been in my life, which I don't mind telling you what's going on in Israel. We hear a lot about that. I don't mind telling you what all the things we see encompassed about Israel. It wouldn't surprise me that the Lord Jesus don't split the eastern skies any moment of any given day right, about, right around the corner. Why? Our country's in trouble, folks. I hope and pray when we go see the election, we see some good things. But it's not left up to us, is it? Yes, it is in some ways. We've got to do our portion. In Romans chapter 8, one of my most favorite passages of Scripture, it said, and we know that all things, what is that? What is it? What is that called? All things. All things work together for good to them that love God. Do you love God tonight? I said, do you love God tonight? Are you ashamed of God tonight? Come on, somebody. If you love him, you're going to praise him. If you love him, you're going to worship him. If you love him, you're going to help your neighbor. If you love him, you're going to do what you can to help the church to get on the place where it needs to be for the glory of God. Listen to what he said. I know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his, his what? His purpose. 29 says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. You know who you look like? <laughs> hello, hello. I'm going to tell you, I'm glad you don't look like me. <laughs> You'd be in trouble if you did. You look like him. You're made in his image. We ought to act like him. We ought to be thankful for everything that God does for us. And I love him and I appreciate him. Listen to what he said. And to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many what? Believers. Believers. Our first Thanksgiving dates back many, many years. 1621. When God created the earth, we are to pray with a thankful heart for all things good or bad. I appreciate these, this, this, these brethren tonight, these pastors. They've got an awesome job. And God's going to hold us accountable for every idle word that we speak. Every one. But he's going to hold you accountable too. Amen. Thank God for Thanksgiving. Amen.
came in tonight, you should have received a candle. Uh, I know there may be some that uh, do not uh, have one. I'm going to ask uh, those that are helping me if they'll go ahead and, and work those lights back there for me. I'm going to ask Pastor Chris uh, Brambro. He is going to come. I'm going to ask all the pastors, uh, as, long, as well as Brother Randy, if they will help. There's some fellowship cups right here by Brother Doug. If you guys would just go throughout the audience, um, Brother Randy, if you'll help these fine gentlemen. And uh, pass these elements out. They are self-serving. Um, and Pastor Chris from the Oak Grove PH Church will walk you through the sacraments that we are about to do. When we met and decided to have a community communion Thanksgiving service, we thought no better way could we celebrate the thankfulness of God than commemorating what God did for us to be thankful for. And that is him sending his son. And so they're going to pass out these. As they begin to make their way, uh, Pastor Chris is going to come and kind of give us some further instructions. So we ask that you take this moment. Uh, with us in a very reverent moment and celebrate this together at this time. I'm going to give you some instruction here in just a few moments, but I also want to take just a moment if I can. I, I know somebody had said that we were hoping to be done around 8, and it's past 8, so they must have met the other one that's coming up, so I've got plenty of time. But I want to read this passage of scripture to you first, and every pastor does uh, different passages of scripture when it comes to communion, and I always speak out of 1 Corinthians 11, where Paul is writing, starting in verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Then he says, this do in remembrance of me. Paul goes on to write in verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. It's important for us to remember what Christ did. In fact, it's so important, if you stop and think about it, Paul wrote the words of Jesus here, but Paul was not in the room when that happened, it means the Holy Spirit revealed it to him because he wanted him to write these words because he wanted to make sure that we understood the importance of remembering just what Jesus Christ did. And there's two elements that we take with communion. We have the, the wafer, the bread, and then we have the juice. And I was thinking about this, and, and I... I the problem is I've got about four sermons I'd like to preach right now, but I'm not going to, I promise. But I've got to take up some time while they're passing stuff out. And they're doing it a little quick, so they need to slow down. I think the blood, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious why we remember the blood. Because I know it was a blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know that it was the blood for me, the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. and But why is it that we have to remember that broken body? And I understand that many books have been written and many sermons have been preached about how communion is the meal that heals because we know that the word says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. And we understand that. But I, be, I was praying about this and just asking the Lord how he wanted me to come with this when we're talking about the bread. And why is it so important for us to remember the bread? You know, Jesus came and he was 100% God and yet still 100% man. I've heard people say that he took off his robe of divinity and put on a robe of flesh. He never took off that divinity. Every step that he took on this, this earth, it was God walking upon this earth. So when we think about this, so we think about the fact that he was, he was on the cross and before the cross that he was scourged and, and the, the whip tore through his flesh and the blood began to spill out and, and how they put the nails in his hands and his feet and the blood began to come and, and all these things and and why is it important for us to remember that? Not just because of the, the healing part, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but because uh, this is what the Lord brought to me. The flesh had to be broken before the glory could flow. I want you to hear that again. The flesh had to be broken before the glory could flow. 
And the reason why we're not seeing more things happening in our churches is because we're not allowing the flesh to be broken. We're not allowing the flesh to be broken. We're still wanting to walk in our own desires and in our own ways. We're still wanting to walk in what we consider to be important instead of going to the Word and saying, God, what's important to you? We're wanting our will to be done, not His will to be done. But before you're going to see the glory flow in your life, in your family, in your home, in your churches, we've got to allow that flesh to first be broken. But we know that He was uh, by his stripes that we were healed. We have healing because of the stripes that he bore upon his back. We have healing, not just physical healing. We have spiritual healing. People who have been hurt by churches. How many of you have ever been hurt by church people? I know every pastor in this place ought to be raising his hand. We've had church hurts, but God can heal those. We've had hurts between people of different political parties, but God can heal those. It doesn't look like he can, but believe me, God can. We can have racial healing. We can have uh, economic healing as far as uh, between different classes. The healing that is being offered to us is not just to get over COVID. It's not just to get over cancer. It's not just to get over a heart attack. But God wants us to be totally and completely healed, and only the blood of Jesus Christ and his body broken can do that. So what I want you to do... For the first part, I want you to take the bread, and I want you to hold it in your hand, and I want you to think about the healing that you need in your life. Maybe you are completely healthy. Maybe you go to the gym, and they know you by first name. Maybe you go to the gym, and, and I mean, and you exercise and all that kind of thing. I don't, and that's fine. Or maybe you just are, you don't, you don't even have to take an aspirin. God bless you for that. You'll get older. Maybe you don't even need glasses. That's fine. But you've got a healing that you need. You need to be healed spiritually. Or maybe you need to be healed with some of the ways that you have, have felt about other people. The ways that you have felt about other churches. We've talked about the different denominations are here. Maybe the ways that you felt towards different denominations. We need healing in our our nation, in our world, in our churches, and in us. And the Lord took the bread. And when he had given thanks, oh God, we thank you for this bread. Not because this is going to give us sustenance, but because the body of Christ that brings sustenance to our spirits. We thank you for that bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which was broken, who? For who? For you. This do in remembrance, don't ever forget, this do in remembrance of me. You can take the bread. Hallelujah. We thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. That's for the healing of our bodies, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our churches, our nation. Lord, bring healing between between families, between husbands and wives who have been struggling, between children and parents who have been estranged between churches who have been in competition with each other. Bring healing, the only healing that can come from Jesus Christ. And then, of course, we come to the blood. And we preach about it, and we sing about it, and we pray about it, and we know about it, and we, we tell others about it, and the world doesn't understand it because the world hasn't had it yet. They don't get it because they haven't gotten it. But only the blood of Jesus Christ, not the blood and this, not the blood and that, only the blood of Jesus Christ can pay for the sin of this world. And I'm so thankful for it. After this, he took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The blood was shed so that we could be here tonight. And we give thanks for the blood of Jesus Christ. You may drink the cup. Lord God, we thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son to die on a cruel cross, to die on a cross that was meant for murderers and thieves, to die on a cross that you yourself caused the tree to grow. And yet you said, I will send my son, not because of anything they have done to earn this, but simply because of my love for them. I will send my son. He will pay the price so that anybody that receives him may have eternal life. God, if there's anyone in this house that does not know you as their Savior, Lord, I pray that you will just stir up the Holy Spirit inside of them, that you'll bring that Holy Spirit conviction, that you'll help them to realize that there is no other way except through Jesus Christ. Lord, help our flesh to be broken so that your glory can flow. We give you honor. We give you praise. For you and you alone are worthy to receive it. In the wonderful and most powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask uh, those uh, that are in charge if they'll get the lights back for me. I'm going to give you a few housekeeping instructions really quick before we uh, dismiss the service tonight. Right outside the double doors as you exit, there will be a trash can that if you don't mind, if you'll just take your, your fellowship cup and just dispose of it for us, um, just it will help our cleaning crew and all that stuff have a little bit less to uh, maintain. Um, let me say quickly uh, before we uh, segue into the benediction time, there's a couple of just um, people uh, and, and folks that made tonight um, uh, possible. Um, it, it takes uh, it takes a village. It's not just one person that can do that. Um, so I'm going to just quickly go through these. I'm going to ask you to, to refrain from applause until I acknowledge everybody, and then I will we'll at one time acknowledge everybody that helped. But I do want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Jack Todd, who brought our message tonight from Mount Calvary, Pastor Chris Piegler. Um, he is our version of PCP. For those of you that know what that is, Pastor Chris Piegler, he's kind of our drug. He kind of keeps us going, and our, he's our PCP. He, uh, he kind of keeps us always on our toes and always makes us feel good, and, uh, and it's legal. And so uh, it's, we can't get much better than PCP uh, with Pastor Chris, but he brought his worship team along with him to help lead some of our worship tonight. Uh, Pastor Doug Cooper over at the uh, uh, Hickory Grove uh, came, to, came tonight as well and uh, was a part of it. And then obviously uh, Pastor Chris Fambro from the uh, Oak Grove uh, recently just, uh, you heard his voice, uh, led us in that as well. So we thank them for that as well. Obviously all of the folks uh, that were a part of our worship team here at the church, uh, Brother Randy and others who helped us do that. I do want to acknowledge a couple people that are behind the scenes that most of you won't know who they are, but I know who they are. Uh, Miss Sandy uh, Burks, who is our uh, uh, custodian at the church, has been here the, all day today. Uh, for a large portion of the day, making sure that you were ready uh, for an arrival, and she spent her time out there. Also, uh, some of our young people, teenagers that runs our sound and media uh, each week, uh, Madison, and then also um, Sister Tana, whose daughter couldn't be here tonight, but she's on our worship team. But they, uh, Sister Tana, as well as Sister Madison, both got off work, came here, rearranged schedules to be here. Um, they've been hiding in the box in the back. You haven't seen them. But uh, every person that has watched us online, every person that heard your smiling voice, every person that saw you on camera, every person that had a microphone so you could be heard, had it not been for those two ladies, you would have looked like a silent film. So they have been working tirelessly. They're back there playing with knobs and buttons and screens, and, and they've had to move camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And so they've done that as well. Sister Carol, who is, uh, who is my boss outside of my wife, uh, I don't I don't really call the shots around here. I just preach. That's all I do. I have two ladies that run my life. It's my wife and Miss Carol. They Miss Carol is my work boss. She tells me, Pastor, don't forget. Pastor, don't forget. Did you call? Did you do? I said, No, ma'am, I did not. Thank you for reminding me. She kept me on my toes today. 
to make sure I had everything together. And uh, my wife, who is working tonight, sends her citations, but she also plays. She's been out here getting the music together, pulling the music, playing behind all of the guest speakers and doing all of that. And so there have been, and, they, and she also, her and Brother Randy, were out here early today getting all the batteries put into every microphone, every candle that you've used tonight. All of those had to be assembled and put together and all of that kind of stuff. So there have been a lot of people behind the scenes to make tonight possible. So I'm going to ask you at this time, can we just give a hand of appreciation to everybody that made today possible? And uh, uh, you also, I failed to mention, but Sister um, Nina as well as Sister Ann was the first two people you saw when you came on this property. They're these two ladies right here. They always make us look good uh, on any event. They're also that. And um, our, my, one of my favorite greeters uh, normally is not here uh, because of, of his schedule, because of different things, because he's normally in the back building. But he's at the back door waiting. Brantley, can you say hey to everybody? Say everybody, hey. There's Brantley. Brantley is my, is my church, is my church greeter. Brantley will chase you down in the parking lot to find out what church you go to. And if you say you don't go to one, he says you are now here. So Brantley is, so you better know where you go to church when you leave tonight because he will ask you. Uh, so make sure, but uh, he is, he's one of our favorites around here and he, uh, he always helps us out as well. So I, I want to acknowledge him as well. So this time I'm going to ask you to stand. I want to be very prudent of your time. I'm going to quickly pray. An Aaronic covenant of blessing over you tonight. Immediately following that, I'm going to ask you just to, to fellowship with one another briefly. Um, and feel free to, to stay as long as you like. Uh, if I don't see you or talk to you uh, before Thursday, let me say to the Santee Circle Church family and every other person or persons from other churches represented, I pray all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Celebrate it with family and friends. Eat lots of food. Get on the borderline of gluttony, but don't cross that line because that's a sin. But get real close uh, with all your turkey and dressing and, uh, and have a good, good time with that. If you're a part of our church, you know I'm not eating stuffing. I'm eating dressing because I ain't stuffing nothing I don't want in my mouth. So, uh, so I'll have dressing on Thursday. Whatever you eat, I hope you enjoy. But let me pray quickly over you. May the Lord bless you.